Um, so uh, just a little preamble to my story is that I wrote this story three days after the radiologist <laughs> told me I had breast cancer. Um, I had not yet received the pathology report. However, the initial surgeon that saw me said that I'd likely need a double mastectomy, um, but that um, the good news was that I had uh, insurance had to pay for reconstruction. Not exactly the thing you want to hear. <laughs> exactly. Um, and I was still at a loss for it all. Um, I knew nothing about cancer going in, and so the title of this piece is Window Shopping. My husband and I had often, fi often find ourselves laughing at things that are absurd, but real nonetheless. I recognized, I recognized it clearly for what it is, a necessary coping mechanism. But I'm also aware of how easily something funny can turn into something sad. When I was an undergraduate, one of my friends had a recurrence of cancer. At her wedding shower, while she was sitting with the news that her cancer had come back, we were laughing about this or that, you know, things that women laugh at during wedding showers, like ridiculous wedding shower presents and cringeworthy shower games. And the focus of the jokes turned to wigs. There was laughing at first, but then a sudden transition to tears. This is what I'm aware of every time I laugh about something. I'm aware that at any moment that laughing can become a cry. Today's laugh was about prosthetic breasts. I just learned there are special prosthetic breasts for swimming, aquadynamic breasts. <laughs> they even make aerodynamic prosthetic breasts. Who knew? <laughs> um, I, I was reminded of Amy Mullen's TED talk, My 12 Pairs of Legs. Amy talks about how having various prosthetic legs allows her to be different heights. She talks about legs as things that allow her to have superpowers. For example, when she wants to run fast, she has special legs for that. I was laughing as my mind raced. If I don't opt for reconstruction from my breast cancer surgery, then I too could have multiple sets of prosthetics for multiple purposes. <laughs> I could have bigger breasts to fill out my favorite shirt or smaller ones when I wanted to appear less noticeable. <laughs> then, of course, it occurs to me that people who saw me on a regular basis would find it rather odd that I changed the sizes. <laughs> and how would I go clothes shopping? Which breasts would I wear? <laughs> and, you know, if I were get to get into competitive swimming, would the breasts that I chose to wear affect how fast I swam? And would it be considered cheating? <laughs> As I wade through the, into the morass of breast cancer surgical decision making, I'm exploring my options. Reconstruction means more surgery, more complicated surgery, and more healing time. No reconstruction means a life of prosthetics. Scott and I went for a walk um, around Sausalito on Saturday. Scott, my wonderful husband, <laughs> um, on Saturday. I noticed that as I was looking at, uh, as we were walking, I was looking at other women's breasts. I'd never really taken notice of other women's breasts before, but now I find myself drawn to them. <laughs> I'm looking. I'm not even sure what I'm thinking when I'm looking, but <laughs> I'm certainly finding myself looking. <laughs> and then breasts. And then I swallow tears. Prosthetics or not, I find myself window shopping. Yeah. <laughs>